All right. <clears throat> now I'll include that picture on there so you can refer to that because that's always the part that people need to people need to reference is that arrangements of the trigger parts. Again, we're using the patented hand. Spring, spring, spring. All can could go flying. Okay. Pull off the trigger. Keep that attached to that, no problem. Okay. Take off your sear and spring. Now, there's nothing holding that on, so that can go somewhere if you're not careful. Just a little bit of tension. Okay. Take off your stop. All right. Now we have this little piece here. That <clears throat> interacts with your handle when your handle comes up. Okay. And allows your plunger to be able to go forward. We're going to pull that out. Mostly because we don't want to lose it later. And it is under tension. So if we pull it out, it's off to the side where we have it. We know where it is. I'm going to put all these parts over here on the paper towel. Just for safety. To keep them as clean as I can keep them clean. Because remember, if I keep them clean, I'm less likely going to have to go back and do it again later. So now we're going to start with our actual reseal. Now I've got my little reseal kit here. I got off of eBay. 12 whole dollars. 12 whole dollars to hopefully... Um, make my life a lot less aggravating because nobody likes missing targets right wiping things down ahead of time degreasing everything we will regrease everything when we put it back together and uh that's a good point here when I talk about greasing, a lot of times when you run across these you know, rifles that are used for things like 4-H, youth sports programs, you're going to find that a lot of them have been, unfortunately, <clears throat> lubed with spray lube uh, things like WD-40 yeah don't use them on these okay uh, for several reasons WD-40 isn't really a lubricant um, uh, WD-40 will swell the o-rings uh, you don't want to be swelling the o-rings uh, the very best thing to use on the O-rings are a silicone O-ring lubricant. What I'm going to use on it is some uh, full synthetic oil. Because that's what I have. That's my go-to on pretty much everything. Uh, besides the oil that I, that I make and market myself. But that's something different. That's not something I use in... That's for firearms use. That's not for... Um, that's not for air rifle. Uh, with air rifle, you're always going to treat it like a firearm, but you're not going to repair it like a firearm. For some reason, there we go. I got most of it all over myself. And if I just again, you know, clean all these surfaces, I don't have to worry about it so much later. Probably see if I have a little bit of copper lube in here. That's a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. We used to try to, uh, add a little bit of copper lube in here. And it's really, it, 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 it was a popular trick at one time, and it's really not, it, it's not worth it. Not worth the aggravation of trying to get it cleaned out later, because that's been in there for years. <clears throat> All right, the first part we can do of the actual O-ring job is 
pull the O-ring. I have my patented bamboo barbecue skewer from the store. I think you saw me use one of those before to push things through. I use these all the time in uh, all the time in everything. I, mean, I use them for working on firearms. I use them for working on <clears throat> rockets. I use them for working on tractors. Yeah, I said working on rockets. You know that. No joke. But <clears throat> the thing is, it's not going to mar the plastic. It's not going to mar the uh, aluminum castings. It's not going to screw anything up. It's wood. I mean, if it's, if it's not good enough, it's going to break. You know, rather than trying to get this off with a... Uh, with a piece of steel. Now, see, that one's really on there. Let's see if I can pull the wiper. Wiper's coming off. And we're going to use a little bit of roll action on there rather than just ripping. Because we got to remember, we're going to put the other one on there. So we don't want to be, we want to get used to the fact that we're not ripping. Look at my hands. See, so that wiper was gross. All right, so we are going to have to revert to an actual little over the hook with the I just took my O-ring hook and whipped it right into another bucket. It's a good opportunity to have something to drink. We'll get to see how my fancy new microphone picks up all those sounds. Pretty sure I'm still on camera. So, get under there, pop it out. Now remember, sometimes you're going to be taking these out just for maintenance or whatever you have to do. So be real careful when you use your O-ring tool that you get under there without perforating the O-ring. You want to just get under and flip it over. Why that one was so stuck on there, I'm not sure. may have to do with the amount of grit that's in there. I'm kind of not really surprised. Like I said, we're talking about a lot of rounds down range with this sucker. <clears throat> now while I'm doing all this, I can talk about some other things because this is just cleaning tasks. Uh, hey, why'd you get that fancy new microphone? Well, I got the fancy new microphone. If you notice some of my videos over the last few months... Um, especially the ones that are at <clears throat> silhouette matches like the footage from the national championships in Ridgeway, the Monarch Cup. Um, I definitely had to do something about the sound uh, because no matter what you do, you catch a lot of this high pop sound from the from the guns you know it's obviously it's a, it's a match in progress you try to also talk to people you're trying to maybe film some of the action you get a wicked pop crackle pop and in order to hear what people say in the level has to be a certain range but you know you also get all that background gun noise and the microphones of both the cameras and the cell phones that I was using uh, they all like to pick up that loud crackle uh, <laughs> from the firing line over whatever anybody might be saying. So, I use some electronical wizarder AI to try to take out some of it at some point. And it's just, it's worth just getting a, uh, a microphone. So now this is going to go over, make sure I'm still on camera. This is going to go over here. We're going to be careful again, not to fold it over too hard. We're going to carefully work things over and I just ripped it in half. That was really, oh, you didn't see me do that on camera, right? Luckily for me,
Luckily for me, I have two kids. What I was doing with that wiper was I was thinking hard about not ripping it. And I think I just sort of, well, you know what? Kit parts off of eBay, they're not exactly the same, are they? They look like they have the same outer dimension, maybe. I'm not 100% sure that's correct. So we'll keep the old wiper just in case. That really seems to be a fairly large difference, huh? Could be an issue here. Uh, it could be a slightly different could be a slightly different part number it could be a difference with uh, how they got made over the years that does happen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on pause so I don't swear on camera okay I can say with confidence that uh, <clears throat> it's not the same wiper I put the old wiper into the spare kit because if you're going to buy a kit, buy two. I did get the wiper on there. But it was absolutely not exactly the same size. Now, like I said, that could be a difference in... That could be absolutely the correct kit. And there's just a difference in uh, manufacturer tolerances over the years. Uh, the other stuff does look the same. I'm going to just double check it. Match things up before I uh, try to put it on. Yep, we're good with that. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of oil from over here. careful where I put the oil because I got cameras and everything else over here I have to keep grabbing my glasses a little bit of oil roll it on there okay I'm going Probably what everybody else would call super, super light with the oil, but that's on purpose. Because I can always add oil, but I'm not going to be able to take it away. I'm just doing a little bit of test fit. Now that's, that's tight, that's for sure. It's tight, that's for sure. Here we go. It's a it's a pre precision fit, so yeah. Now. <clears throat> I'm going to remove this O-ring. I'm saving all the old parts too, just in case. Uh, because in an absolute emergency, you might need the backup. Although I'm 99.9% .9 sure that one or both of these O-rings is absolutely not any good. But I have parts to match up. Now that gets caught under there. That's totally normal. It's pliable, and we're just going to very gently, with a blunt stick, just push it out, because we're going to have to do that when we put the new one in. Uh, your colored O-ring, whatever color it is, if it's orange, if it's yellow, that goes on the, the, the trigger piston side, the release side. The black one's going to go 
on your pressure tube, pressure piston. I'm probably getting all of these all of these words wrong because, like I said, I'm not an air I'm, not, I'm no air gun expert. <clears throat> okay, in here you have a spring, you have a pin, you have a clip. Okay, this is your air release that releases the air from the piston through the trigger. You know, the trigger actuates it and pushes the, the pellet up through the barrel. Let's get this out of here. So, you know, I might need that. This comes off fairly easily, but I want to keep I want to keep a thumb on here. Because there is a spring under there, it's under a little bit of load. Still could come flying off. There we go. There's my spring. There's my plunger. And that is dirty. So that tabs under there, tabs onto that, and that holds the spring down. So I'm going to pause it again because there's no sense in uh, just watching me clean things. All right. <clears throat> so I've got the new kit parts out on the table here. I've got the old kit parts. Put them in the bag. Put an X on it so I know that those are not good. Because I have do have some good pieces in here too. I actually have several of these kits. <clears throat> But being a competitive shooter, I tend to keep my old parts for reference later. So if I have another breakdown, I can look at things. Do I really need to keep them for the air rifle? No, I don't. But it's just force of habit, something I do anyway. So we've got the plunger, plunger spring. I know some people have a certain way when they do these. <clears throat> There's probably a certain expert way to do it. Um, I put a little bit of lube on it. Mm, could probably stand a tiny bit more. All I'm doing behind the camera is I just got a little, a, whoop, small shaker bottle. I gotta make sure I didn't get any of that dirty. Probably way more lube than I need, but I can wipe it off. I can always wipe it off before I put it in. And I know there's a certain way that's supposed to go down in there so it seats and there's a professional way that people do things. What I probably should do is take the spring off. Get it in there first. Then capture it. <clears throat> but again, I'm just a I'm just a knucklehead. I don't know anything, right? No. Oh, try to keep things on camera. This is going to go in. It's like a hinge door. What I do is lie it down that way. Not like I ever do this on camera either. There we go. So you could feel that go in like that. And that's what I want. I want that to go in and have the spring still be flat. And you'll feel it. You'll know when it's right. See, that was not right. One thing I can do is get... I can probably use the back of this. Give myself a little pre-pressure. There we go. That felt better for sure that time. But just for giggles, I'm going to be pushing on it a little bit here, making sure it's not going to come flying off. See, the time when I had it the first time, it did come flying off because I could feel it wasn't on there, right? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> that brings up another point altogether. I'm going to push on this. I'm going to make sure it goes in and out nice and easy. And you should feel when the, the, the piston comes down, and when I release pressure off the piston, you feel it seat in there. It seats in there pretty, pretty nice and snug. Doesn't stick, but it's almost right on that edge of stiction. 
if that's a term you can really use, is stiction. <clears throat> now, the same way that these Daisy 753, 853, all the, that whole line of rifles is used for teaching kids marksmanship. You could also, this would be a great project to do with the kiddos to teach them the basics of how to get things repaired, how to do smart processes, how to be patient. Okay, now speaking of patient, I don't need you up here. You need to be out at the barn eating rats, okay? It's a nice day out. Go play. <clears throat> Make sure there's no hair of gato on my rifle. Okay. Uh, this, so where was I anyway? Oh, yeah. Uh, good project to do with the kiddos. Good way to teach them. A little bit of uh, science, engineering, technology. This is one of my secret weapons. It's another one of those uh, bamboo skewers, but I have epoxy. I dipped it in epoxy and let it set up. So it's actually kind of a, it's a good slick surface. And I'm just rolling that on with my greasy finger. All right. Now... Rip to reassembly time. <clears throat> I keep running behind the camera in order to put a little bit of oil on my hands. So all I'm going to do is rrr, fling springs around. All I'm going to do is uh, get my hands oily. That would have been pretty good if I actually put it in backwards, huh? That would make, make a great YouTube video. But you also got to realize I'm watching the cat out one eye, making sure she's not going to jump back on the table and trying to put this back together on camera. So it's, a, it's an experience. It's fun for kids of all ages. All right, now as I put things together, I'm also going to be sort of Making sure all my bits and pieces line up. Making sure some of the stuff that I've super cleaned can now get a little bit of oil on it. Smack the camera around a little. Uh, and when it comes to amounts of oil that goes on, uh, I'm literally just wiping things off. Wiping things on. And I'll probably wipe all the excess off. Uh, just like you're putting together a firearm. The same way. Where you're just barely coating it with oil. Same idea. Now, how often should you take this apart? Clean it and oil it? I don't know. I'm sure there's air gun experts out there who will tell you. I'm not an air gun expert. If you want to talk to me about some other things, I can be an expert. Air gun expert, I'm not an air gun expert. <clears throat> I'm happy to talk about it. I'm happy to show people how things go together. We'll get our trigger assembly together. When this part goes together, when you when you piece everything back together at the very end, this spring right here is the number one gotcha on this uh, whole assembly. And I'll show you that when we get it back together. So it's getting it into the 
into the casing where it's the gotcha. And now, I've got trigger pieces in place. I'm being careful that I don't fling. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Being careful I do not fling. Springs everywhere. <coughs> when I put this one in here, this is what we have to be careful. Because then I've got enough pressure to make things happen. Uh, this little end of the spring goes on this little ear. I really want to make sure I caught that on camera. Yeah, I did. Okay. I'm going to remove this spring just so I don't lose it. If I get everything in here, we can do a how it works section, okay? Er, not like that. I mean, that's literally how it works, but that's not what I wanted to happen. I'm trying to hold it all down with one hand. All right, now you can see the sear is on the back of that. <clears throat> when I pull this backwards, the little tab, there you go, nothing but the best quality, uh, the best quality, um, Hollywood quality stuff right there. The little tab on that is going to ride on there. So when I pull that back to load another pellet in, holding it down as best I can with my hand here because I know it's all going to go flying. Pull that back, and it, now it's the sear is locked in there. So the sear locked in. When I pull it, when I squeeze the trigger, you don't pull the trigger, you squeeze the trigger. When I squeeze the trigger, it's going to go flying. It's going to hit that valve. It's going to go through. Fire my pellet down range. <clears throat> and hope like all hell. I can actually knock down a turkey. <laughs> <clears throat> so now we've got most of it back together. We've got this little devil spring here. That pushes this the sear back up. The reset spring. Okay. I'm going to put this on here. Now, hey, okay, get off there. One on too easy. That hinges on here. Little hook. Hinges in there, okay. And in theory, it's all going to line up. The problem is going to be that little devil spring is not going to want to, uh, is not going to want to go inside. So, I'm going to get that little devil spring, which I was going to hold on, oh, I was going to hold it on with a piece of a Q-tip, but I didn't have to, because it all went flying. This is the fiddly part. This is the part that takes patience. Again, if this is something you want to do with your youth, and explain to them that life is sometimes difficult when you're trying to put things back together. You know, these are good lessons to learn. Or, <clears throat> if you're a completely adult adult, and you're getting into shooting silhouette, and you're learning how to fix things, still, same idea. You're going to have to learn how to fix things. This would be a good start. And don't worry, you go out and buy the complicated, fancy-schmancy, uh, silhouette rifle. You're going to have to learn how to fix that one too. So you might as well learn with this one. All right, now, I heard everything snapped down there nice. Okay. I'm double checking my little inspection window here. Oh, knocking over the camera. Look at that. I'll do anything for the right shot, won't I? All right. 
little inspection window. I can see the little devil spring, which is, I keep calling it the devil spring. It's actually the sear reset spring. I'm gonna find the little screw that goes in the side of that. Okay, that's your longer, the longer of the screws because it's going all the way through into that piece of aluminum. There we go. Now at that point, when you've got that secured, double check everything, look through the little observation window. Okay, we can try to make sure that everything works. We don't really want to go any further until we make sure that everything works. Okay. I heard it reset. I held that with my hand so it didn't go flying forward. Okay. It's cocked. We'll pretend that we loaded around. The round's in there. This is now down. It's ready to fire. I'm going to squeeze the trigger. And it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Now, I'm not going to do that once. I'm going to do that several times. I'm also going to look through my observation window. We cock it as if we were loading a pellet. Push forward as if we were loading it into the chamber. Squeeze the trigger. And it did what it was supposed to do. Yes, it's an extremely long trigger. It has an extremely long pull. It has an extremely long, uh, I mean, extremely heavy trigger. Uh, that's just what it is with these. Like I said, <clears throat> there's dozens of better options when it comes to silhouette air rifles. This is a very basic one. But if you can knock them down with this, uh, with a heavy trigger, with a long, with a long pull, uh, you get good at knocking them down with this, uh, you're going to be a better shooter, I guarantee. Now, I may not get super high scores with this. It's just the nature of the beast. I'm not going to get super high scores with this. But, <clears throat> it's going to make me a decent shooter. All right. I'm going to start piecing some of these things back together. Slide this over. That's a little better. Now remember, you got these little ears that go over there, so that's the side that goes first. We're sliding this back together. We're being careful. We're not putting a lot of force on anything. That's one thing uh, we're not going to do is put a lot of force. And it takes a little bit of a push. Uh, that little notch goes on the bottom. Is that little notch goes into the tab that's on here. Don't worry, I'm going to put a little more oil on that O-ring before I put it in. Okay. I've got that in there upside down, so it's going to come back out. that needs to go in here. What I'm going to do first is seat this very thin silver tube in there. I'm going to grab my pin. I'm going to clean that out too. Geez, you would think I would run and run this through the mud puddles or something, how dirty it is, but I don't.
This is not a swamp gun. Okay, all I want to do here is I just want to just test my smoothness, nice and smooth. Yes, I'm probably going to add a little bit of oil to the wiper. And that feels pretty good. Where I wasn't 100% I'll be honest, I wasn't 100% sure about that wiper. The O-ring feels great. I wanted to be a little more confident on that wiper. <clears throat> now I'm popping it out. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on my finger and get it on that wiper. I'm not overdoing it. It's a spongy little thing, so it's going to uh, absorb some oil. So I gotta be careful about not overdoing it, just like everything else. All right, we'll go it all go all back again. Remember the grooves, all I'm doing is very, oops, see I got to be very careful not to pinch that o-ring. There we go, once it's in there, it's in there. Grooves go on the bottom. The assembly goes back in the case. The piston tube, which is the business end of the whole thing, goes all the way to the end. I gotta get this lined up though. The, the, I'm not getting it lined up. That's driving me crazy. Push it with my thumb instead. There we go. I mean, one of the things is just. It is what it is, and there's a little bit of general floppiness to some of these parts. I can adjust it a little bit here and there by sort of steering it. There we go. That nice fresh O-ring is uh, <coughs> keeping things kind of nice and stiff. So I gotta now I'm putting this pin in. This I may take this pin in and out a couple of times before I get it all together. Now, I was going to put a little, a little oil on that O-ring, didn't I? There we go. I had a little on there before, but a little more is better. More is better. Now again, This is going to be don't pinch the o-ring time again this is where i got to be patient try not to swear i'm going to be less worried about getting it on camera than i am getting it into the uh seated into the tube because i have a fly that's buzzing around my head too which does not help This is real life, folks. This isn't just YouTube trickery. You're watching while I'm doing it. So what I did was I spread those ears out a little bit to give myself a little more room to work. I have to be cautious about lining this up because, like I said, don't want to pinch that old ring. You're going to hear a lot of swearing. There we go. Went in there nice. Okay. Now I'm going to pinch those ears down a little bit by hand. 
You shouldn't have to hammer on it with a rubber hammer. Looks like it went on there pretty good. All right, now, <clears throat> all the pots that need to stay clean are covered up now, so. trying to keep it lined up with my hand but I can line that up in a minute. Is that not the right screw? Yeah it is. There we go. Uh, I'm not doing this in the right order am I? That's probably why. Doesn't go on now, it goes on after I get the cover on, dum dum. Let's get the cover on. <clears throat> stuff in there. So I've got to get my little caulking handle in there with the spring. Let's get it on there with the spring and then get the cover over it. just kind of keep my hand on there okay this cover has tabs line all this up <laughs> line up with one hand get the cover on there with the other hand if you don't have a scope mounted to it it's going to be a lot easier Doesn't take much to make that spring fly off and go flying across the room, so I gotta be careful. As I was saying, without a scope on it, it's a lot easier. The tabs going <clears throat> going to the piston tube. And then in theory, the whole thing should slide down without pinching my finger off. But remember those little ears. I'm pr pinching those little ears and trying to get this down over there. Okay, there it goes. First thing I want to do is just double check that because that's the part that wants to fly out. The part here with the spring. <clears throat> now I can put the screws in that I was trying to do before. The only reason I keep the scope mounted on that is because I do not want to go through the process of trying to re-zero it. Now, in theory, honest, I should say that's in theory, in honest fact, I will have to re-zero it because that is not a perfect system of putting those tabs onto that piston tube and expecting it to act correctly and expecting it to hold its zero perfectly. Now, I'm going to be careful with everything I do because the scope is on there. I don't want to bash the scope around. So I'm going to get that pin back in. All at the same time, smacking the camera all over the place. Certainly have a nice seal from the O-rings now. So I got that pin on there. And that pin is going to be retained um, when I put the stock in. That's what keeps it in. There's nothing else that really keeps it in there. All right, now, 
for fun and games. Now we know that it's unloaded because I've uh, flapped that thing back and forth six or seven times. Yeah, see, okay, that took some force. <clears throat> Again, it's not loaded, there's no pellet in it. I'm pointing it in a safe direction, which is down the back side of the garage. Squeeze the trigger, and it makes that wonderful sound that it's supposed to make. There was no hissing involved ahead of that pulling the trigger, which is nice. Because that's what was happening before, was I would pump it up, <clears throat> It pumped up way too easy, uh, and I had a nice hissing sound. The sultry sounds of the flat tire type hissing as I was trying to get it, uh, <clears throat> trying to fire around downrange. I'm going to put in this little plastic piece here that goes, isolates the barrel from the piston tube. Like I said, I'm sure that there's some sort of special fancy place where I can put that. And maybe some air gun expert can uh, chime in and give us uh, an idea of where that should go. Uh, I know from every other rifle that I've ever worked on that isn't an air rifle, that barrel harmonics are a really important thing. Um, this is just a little thing of alcohol I was using to clean with. <clears throat> so I'm sure that there's a barrel harmonics trick for the 753, probably the 853 and everything else too. If someone wants to share, that would be great. Now we're going to put it back in the stock. And sometimes getting these little doodahs in the stock with a rifle can be the most frustrating part of the whole job. <laughs> Plus, again, if I didn't have a scope on it, it probably wouldn't be that bad. Now what I've got to do is just get this all in there centered. But it's going to come up and out of the stock several times in order for me to get it in there. That, I've never found any kind of trick of the trade. It's always just a fiddly thing to get it in there. I don't know if this stock fits several different types of rifles or what it is. So we've got these spacers, that would be my guess. It's just an ease to ease manufacturing. It fits in these little tabs on the, I want to call it the receiver all the time, on the tabs on the action cover. And there'll be some Stretching of the stock and pushing and probably pinching my thumbs and swearing. But it does fit in there. And when it does fit in there, it fits all fits in there fairly nice. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Alright, now we've got this this guy here. This saddle that goes over here, and I may have to loosen the pieces I just put in there in order to get this in there. remember how this is supposed to go if this goes facing forward or facing backwards and when we come down to that whole question of uh, barrel harmonics I also wonder if this is a necessary or b a detriment to what I'm doing here I mean which could be All right, and one of the things you're going to learn as you start messing around with firearms or air rifles is you're going to start acquiring yourself probably quite a few tools. I'm 
one of those tools is probably going to be a set of pin punches, especially when you do a lot of firearms, uh, for lining things up. may have to come through the other side on that. I'm trying to line up several layers of things here. That'll help hold things. I don't know where my rubber mallet is. Not that I really want to bang on this because it does have a scope on it, so I really don't want to bang on it. Try getting the other side in. All right. Sometimes that will give me something to grip onto, to thread into. Be careful where I push. You don't ever want to be putting any pressure on the barrel air rifle, firearm, or anything like that. You don't want to be putting pressure on the barrel. Yeah, it's made out of steel, but no, you don't want to uh, force and push and put things out of whack. That's going in nicely now. Okay, it's cinching up against the other side, so we're good. Again, not a million foot-pounds. I'm going to make sure that this tab is going to hit the, inter hit the interrupter. Perfect. Nice. I'm going to work the trigger without the pump, without pumping it. Nice. Okay. The next thing we'll do is we go out and check my zeros and check for accuracy. Uh, put it on paper and just make sure we're up to up to speed. And that will take, you know, probably several shots to get it going. And uh, there you go. Daisy, Daisy, which one is this? 53. Oh, my goodness. It's getting warm out here again. And uh, we'll see you next time. This is a workbench.